Welcome from wherever you are to Paradox. We're an affirming community that meets every Saturday morning online and in person for church at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. and for our kids and youth programs at 10, 15 a.m. By practicing the art of community, wrestling with scripture, and meditating in prayer, we empower each other to love God with all our hearts, minds, and souls, and to radically love others fully and completely in their entire identity. At Paradox, we know that experiencing the absence of God is as real as experiencing the presence of God. And we honor these realities by carving out space and time each week to celebrate and to lament together. By texting PARADOX to 22333, you can join us by sharing your anonymous celebrations and laments. Currently, we are in the midst of a 66-part sermon series where we study every single book of the Bible through stories of joy, mourning, doubt, peace, oppression, and liberation, we explore together the unique relationship between the human and the divine. Church may leave you with more questions than answers, but that is one of the things we value most. Here at Paradox, we believe that sermons are meant to start discussions, not end them. We hope our time together leads to better conversations, deeper questions, and excitement for mystery and a conviction to honor the image of God in all we meet as we seek to see and embrace Jesus Christ in all. Good morning. We're so happy that you were able to all join us here this morning. Um, As you can see by the handouts that you got when coming in and by the beautiful flags hanging in our sanctuary, today's service is going to be a little bit different. Um, So today we are celebrating the LGBTQ plus community by having a pride celebration service. (laughs) Yeah, super, super exciting. So um, sometimes for a lot of queer people, the journey to loving and accepting yourself and being excited about who you are can be difficult and long and to honor that journey today. The the service is going to go through the uniquely queer experiences of questioning your identity, coming out to those around you, and learning to celebrate that we are beautiful because of our queerness and not in spite of it. We we invite you to join us today in a service of art and music and storytelling and my sermon, which will happen in three parts as we celebrate our queer siblings. Welcome to Paradox. This is my parents' world And to my listening ears All nature sings and round me rings The music of the spheres This is my parents' world I rest me in the thought Of rocks and trees, of skies and seas Their hand the wonders wrought This is my parents' world The birds their carols raise the morning light, the lily white, declare their maker's praise. This is my parents' world, they shine in all that's fair, in the rustling grass I hear them pass they speak to me everywhere this is my parents world oh let me ne'er forget that though the wrong seems oft so strong God is the ruler yet This is my 
my parents' world, why should my heart be sad? The Lord is crowned, let the heavens ring. God reigns, let the earth be glad. Far apart, and 
She tastes like birthday cake and story time and fall But to her I taste nothing at all And she smells like lemongrass and sleep And she tastes like apple juice and peach Oh, you would find her in a Polaroid picture And she means everything to me Yes, she means everything to me I remember when I realized that I was halfway in love with my best friend of three years. We became friends when we were about 12 or 13 and quickly became absolutely inseparable. I wanted to spend every waking second with her. Looking back on how I felt then from where I am now, it's so obvious how much I really liked her. I went through what our first hug would be like over and over again in my mind. And when it finally happened, I walked away bright red with a huge grin on my face and a giddy feeling in my chest. I used to call her on the phone every night. And when it got so late that my parents would take away my phone, I would call her on our home phone. I had her, memor me or her number memorized and I would call her every night on my home phone. Once, she sent me a text with a heart in it, and I thought about it for days. I had never had a real crush before this, and so, in my mind, this is just what having a best friend was like. But when I first began to question and suspect that there might have been more to my feelings than friendship, I instantly denied it. If I really liked her as more than a friend, wouldn't I just know? And how could I even process it if I did like her? It was way too scary for me to even consider, and so I just tried to push it as far away as possible. And when that stopped being effective, I also began to question every other girl that had ever stood out in my mind. Did I like them romantically as well? How could I even figure that out? I had no idea. I can remember talking to a friend of mine at the time and asking if she had ever experienced what I had deemed friend crushes. She asked what a friend crush was, and I told her, well, it's the same feeling that you get when you have a crush on a boy. So like, you're really nervous, you want to be around them all the time, you want to talk to them all the time, you think about them all the time, except for it's with a girl, and so it's like a friend crush and not a real crush. She told me that she did not, in fact, experience friend crushes. For a couple of years, I would think about this on and off over and over again. First, I would begin to question my sexuality. Any girl that would catch my eye, I would go through the questions in my mind about whether or not I was attracted to her. I was terrified that somebody might find out I was questioning my sexuality, and so I would push it as far away as possible and ignore it as much as I could. But it would always come back again. I remember a number of times lying in my bed late at night and staring up at the ceiling and feeling panicked at the possibility that I was not straight. I, it, it was like my, my chest would clench up, I would feel panicky, and I would toss and turn, trying so hard to get to sleep and to push all of my feelings down enough that I wouldn't have to think about them. Questioning can feel similar to many people. There is an online social media platform called Reddit, and on Reddit, there are different online groups that can be safe havens for many people from the LGBTQ community. I think that this quote from an anonymous Reddit user who is currently going through the experience of questioning sums up the feeling pretty well. They say, I try to deny I'm gay, but it never works. I am constantly anxious, paranoid, and scared of anyone coming to the conclusion that I am not straight. All I want is to be able to stop seeing it as some problem and being scared of people finding out. 
I've not been able to do many things I enjoy, and I'm worried about everything, whether it's what I wear, how I act, or even hanging out around friends. Questioning can feel all-consuming for many people, and it is terrifying to even consider a lot of times. We're scared because we hear how the gay kids are always the butt of jokes told by straight people, and if we admit that we're queer, we're admitting that we were the butt of the joke all along. We know that we could lose the friends who make those jokes, and so we just deny and laugh along with them. We're scared because we hear the Christians that we grew up with weaponizing the Bible against gay people, and we know that if we admit we're queer, those same Bible verses would be hurled right back at us. We've heard the conversations that parents have after church about the kid in your class who came out a couple of years ago and how it's so unfortunate that they chose the wrong path. We've sat through sermons about sexual immorality and how we need to love the sinner, hate the sin. We've been told that God does not approve of queer people, and we're scared that if we were queer, God would not approve of us either. We're scared because we've, told, we've been told the stories of queer children who were kicked out of their homes where they were told that they were loved unconditionally. To admit that you might be queer is to admit that the unconditional love in your life might be conditional after all. To anyone who might be in a time of questioning right now, know that you will be okay. There are so many people who have come before you and know exactly what you're going through and just how you're feeling. And I can promise you, you are not alone. It's okay to be wrong. It's okay to choose what you think feels right in that moment and decide that maybe that's not exactly accurate. Um, it's not exactly because you were wrong per se, but because you were growing and that is what felt right in that moment. Um, yeah, it's okay to not quite get it right the first time. I think the advice I would give myself is to just trust the process. Have those conversations with yourself, have those conversations with people in the community that you trust, and just continue to seek out whatever pieces of knowledge that you feel that you need to in order to become your true self. Don't rush trying to define yourself or trying to defend yourself to others, um, you'll find pretty quick that the people don't matter won't stay long and the people that do matter will. And there is more masculinity in your kindness than there is in their toxicity. Be true to yourself. Don't try to hide or be what is considered normal. Um, and the people that love you will love you for exactly who you are. Don't, don't hide, don't be afraid, it'll be okay. Um, I would say that don't put yourself in a box. Uh, you don't have to be completely this or completely that. Sexuality isn't black and white. Uh, you're gonna continue to be involving and living um, experiences and so you can live on that spectrum and it's absolutely okay. Uh, I thought about that, I thought about this quite a bit. Um, the best advice that I would give to my 14 year old self, like right before I came out, would be you're not weird. Um, they're the kids around you, they're not right. <laughs> they're just parroting back what their parents have told them and they're also very sheltered. So there is that. I think I would tell my younger self, it's okay to have a little flair and a little flavor um, than you have than the rest of the other boys. Uh, this is what will become your superpower and what your family and friends are just gonna love most about you. So please be kind to yourself. Well, uh, my younger self questioning her identity. Um, funny story is that many, many years ago, I identified as a heterosexual. And so 
I don't know exactly what I would tell her, but obviously living some time and experience some, experiencing some new things, I would definitely um, have some unsolicited advice for her. Um, definitely to just live your full self. Um, there are going to be some turns and twists along the way and you know the best thing that you can do is show up as yourself. Feel as comfortable and confident as you possibly can um, but get more familiar with who you are becoming and definitely um, be true to who you are currently experiencing yourself to be. Lie to yourself about this, and you will forever lie about everything. Everybody already knows everything, so you can lie to them. That's what they want. But lie to yourself, and you will lose, and what you will lose is yourself. Then you turn into them. For each gay kid whose adolescence was America in the 40s or 50s, the primary, the crucial scenario forever is coming out. Or not. Or not. Or not. Or not. Involuted deities of self erasure. Quickly after my parents died, I came out, foundational narrative designed to confer existence. If I had managed to come out to my mother, she would have blamed not me, but herself. The door through which you were shoved out into the light was self-loathing and terror. Thank you, terror. You learned early that adults' genteel fantasies about human life were not for you, life. Lie to yourself about this, and you will forever lie about everything. Mm-hmm.
podcast in everybody's life and I am There's a shadow in everybody's front door and I am There's a dark cloud in everybody's sunlight and I am That I go through Sometimes I can't sleep at night If I had my face Heaven forbid It wouldn't be the worst thing That I ever did It's a hell of a world That we're living in Change to ten A sin is a sin Don't look at me Immediately And whisper on my back Thinking I'm naive It's my southern hospitality Tolerates more BS than even I can believe There's an outcast in everybody's life And I am burned There's a dark cloud in everybody's sunlight And I am burned There's a shadow in everybody's front door And I am burned smarter we get, the less we understand about the things we regret. I am shame, she is me, we get down with our bad selves figuratively. Don't care too much what other people say, get along as well by my own damn self. Never asked for no one's philosophy, it's obvious. Front door and I am her. Oh, you know I am My coming out experience is I'm still doing it 40 years later. Um, matter of fact, I just finally came out to a couple friends within the last three or four weeks that I've known for two years. So I think it's something that depending on the situation we're in, like for, for me it was work, you know, um, it wasn't really accepted and, and you know when I first realized who I was, um, family and friends, I lost friends because of it. So. For me, I'm, I'm continuing. I, I continue to struggle with coming out, being accepted, and being true to who I am. So my coming out experience was always pretty positive. I always felt love from my family and all my friends, and even from the people I didn't expect it, like my grandma. She welcomed my first boyfriend when I first brought him home to introduce him to everyone. Like, an open arm and a hug and I thought that was amazing and as scary as it was in his during this time politically um I'm always leaning on that love my coming out experience was not great especially in the beginning it was really really hard and I'm definitely not the first person to say that um I remember one of the first times I came out to my mom, I was sitting in the car with her, and you know, you know that feeling, like shaky hands, sweaty hands, 
pulse racing, you can't focus on any one thing. And the only thing I could muster out was that I felt different. And that's kind of how that sat in my mouth. And yeah, I, I don't think I, I mean, I'll be forever coming out and it was hard, but it proved to me how strong I was and continued to be. My coming out experience um, wasn't by choice. It was not entirely by choice. I told someone who I specifically told them not to tell anyone, and they did because that's what teenagers do. Um, it's it's in the past, uh, but yeah, that was a big part of my coming out experience. Um, so yeah, even now I'm just like, I don't out people <laughs> because that hurts. That's, it's really scary when that's, when it's out there, especially if you don't entirely have your own identity completely figured out yet and suddenly a bunch of people know and are asking you a bunch of questions that you don't know how to answer. So, yeah, that was a part of my coming out experience. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't all bad. Um, and looking back, it, uh, it made me ask a lot of questions about myself that I know a lot of people uh, still don't ask about themselves or question about themselves. So, yeah. Well, my coming out experience happened several years ago, not too long ago. Um, it's, it's definitely something that you can't quite um, compact into a few sentences, but definitely um, terrifying and unfamiliar. Um, I have family and friends and extended family that I chose to share my journey with um, and it was definitely um, a little frightening you know I was afraid of what their um, reaction would be how they would definitely treat me after experiencing this um, new thing about myself but I feel like I rather take the plunge and kind of you know share this part of myself and I definitely found that people were more mature than what I had given them credit to be and um, really appreciated the fact that I stepped out and shared that side of myself. Don't get me wrong, there definitely were people who um, decided that, you know, they didn't agree with the path that I was taking and thought that, um, well, they had their own opinions and were all entitled to that. So I respected that and um, just decided that definitely it was the best thing for me. And I appreciated the fact that I showed up for myself in that brave and courageous way, so. Uh, the thing I thought I would never do um, I did it at age 22 um, in college. Uh, so it, as a kid, I, it was very, I think, difficult as, as a lot of the interviewees will probably share with you. Um, a lot of dark thoughts, negative thoughts. Um, so it meant freeing myself from finally all of that. Um, and I was most of all nervous about what my family was gonna respond, how they were going to respond to that, what kind of experiences we're going to moving forward in our relationship. Um, but thankfully, it was something that brought us even closer. Uh, it helped us learn more, a lot more about each other. And something I felt like the elephant in the room was finally being addressed. Um, so that, that meant now being authentic. Uh, so now uh, coming out, um, it's something I reflect on uh, each and every time. I'm Sabbath specifically, but just uh, something I'm thankful for, and I give God a lot of um, you know gratitude. Okay, so um, my coming out experience was kind of like everybody was at the party already before me, um, because 
when I came out to my parents, they kind of already had a feeling. And um, despite them kind of already knowing um, about knowing that about me at a younger age, I think it's really beautiful that they gave me that space for me to figure that out on my own um, and to find myself. So for that, I'm forever grateful and they continue to be accepting and supporting. Um, I first came out when I was 18 to a family member, my cousin, and it's continuing on even to this day, correct? That's one of the greatest things about being a part of this community is you continue to just share that part of your identity every day with people. Whether it's starting a new job, introducing yourself to a new group of people or friend groups, you're continuing to just be your true authentic self. And every chance that you get to express that part of yourself, you get more and more comfortable with it. And it's just the most beautiful feeling ever. Linnell, my girlfriend, was technically the first person that I came out to, although I'm not even sure if that would really count. <laughs> We've been dating now for over two years, but we had just become friends at the time when I was questioning my sexuality. Because she was queer and she was a queer person that I knew, I confided in her about everything every step of the way, and so I actually came out to her at the same time that I first came out to myself. I remember asking her, well, Let's say I did like girls. What would I even call myself? I hadn't thought about labels at all at this point, and honestly, I was just scared to call myself anything other than straight. Linnell told me I should call myself whatever felt the least scary. And I remember hearing the words, I guess I would say I'm not straight then, as if they were coming from farther away than my own mouth. They felt strange and not true at the time that I said them. And I came out again this time to my best friend. We were sitting smashed together in a hammock on a camping trip, and I remember thinking about the words I would say to her and wondering if she wouldn't want to sit as close to me anymore once she found out. I took a deep breath, and I opened my mouth. She listened patiently to me tell her in a scared and shaky voice that I thought I liked girls as well as boys. And I felt the words stick in my throat on their way out, but she told me that she loved me and she let me lean on her shoulder. Then I came out to my mom. She was talking about someone she knew who was gay and said something to the extent of, well, gay people don't choose to be gay any more than you choose to be straight, right? <laughs> my world froze and time slowed down. My whole body felt paralyzed like a deer in the headlights. What was I supposed to say? All that came out of my mouth was, uh, I'm not straight. And it came out again, this time sitting in a group of girls who were my new college friends. They were all going around the group and asking who had a boyfriend that was there. So as the, the number of girls that were sharing got smaller, um, my heart rate sped up. I remember clenching my shaky hands in my lap so that nobody could see how nervous I was. And when they got to me, I told them that I actually had a girlfriend. I tried to infuse my words with an air of nonchalance so that it would send the message that I don't really care what you think of me. In that moment, though, I wanted their approval and acceptance more than anything. And I came out yet again to the woman cutting my hair who asked if I had a special guy in my life. When I replied, I'm dating a girl, actually, she said, what? Thinking she didn't hear me, I said, oh, I actually have a girlfriend. You have a what? My face got warm and I sank down into my chair. Um, a girlfriend? She just said, oh, before moving on to another topic. And again, about 20 minutes ago, I sat in the front row of this church with clammy hands and shaking legs, contemplating the consequences of coming out again. Coming out is never the one-time experience that so many people make it out to be. I have come out so many more times than I have shared here, and I will be coming out for the rest of my life. This is the experience of many queer people. For some queer people, coming out is not something that they've done yet and is something that they will never be able to do, and sometimes that's the best choice that you can make for yourself, and I fully support anybody who makes that decision for themselves. 
For me, however, I was able to come out, and I was incredibly lucky. I had a good experience, and I was supported by the people around me. I'm part of the group of queer individuals who were loved and celebrated by their family and friends, and my memories of coming out are largely positive. But for many other queer people, coming out is one of the worst memories of their lives. I have a friend whose father called them disgusting, told them that they were living against God's will. I know of someone who was bullied mercilessly in high school and lost many friends for admitting that she liked girls. I have another friend who was cornered by her grandmother at a family function and asked why she was so set on tearing their family apart. There are countless ways that people can react to a coming out story, but whatever the reaction is and whoever you are, coming out is one of the bravest things you will ever do. Every time you come out, you are voluntarily putting yourself in a position of incredible vulnerability. And I have never experienced anything quite like the moment before coming out. For me, this moment begins with a tight feeling in your chest. You can hear your heart pounding in your ears and your hands begin to shake as you realize that the words you say next could change the relationship you have with this person forever. You stand on the edge of coming out and you realize that once the words, I'm gay, leave your mouth, they can never be taken back. The potential for rejection is there, and in many cases, it is very real. And yet, we come out anyways. Someone deciding to come out is one of the most beautiful, incredible things I have had the honor of being able to witness. One of the unique things about being queer is that many times, queerness is something that you can choose when to share with someone else. And although coming out can be terrifying and definitely carries the risk of rejection, we want so badly to be known and accepted for our most authentic selves that we are willing to take the risk of rejection in order to live in authenticity. The decision to take that risk and open yourself up to being fully known is beautiful and powerful and courageous. And it is a place where I have experienced the divine. John 4, 5 through 30, tells the story of a Samaritan woman who also stands on the edge of being fully known. This woman had been married five different times, and at the time she was alive, women could not have a meaningful existence outside of marriage. A husband provided women with their place in society as well as status and security. If you were an unmarried woman, you were an outcast. Even within marriage, however, women had little to no say about what happened to them, and the man in the marriage had the sole right to initiate a divorce. People in this Samaritan woman's society would have viewed her poorly for having multiple husbands, but the reality is she had little choice in her circumstances. She was judged as a sinner because of something that she could not choose. She comes to get her water from the well in the middle of the day, likely to avoid rejection from the other women of her town who would have gotten their water in the evening. Most of the time, she would have been there alone, but today, Jesus is there waiting for her. As she approaches, he initiates conversation by asking her for a drink of water. She is understandably suspicious of him. She is a Samaritan, and Jewish people like Jesus often rejected Samaritans. And she's also been rejected by her own community for something completely outside of her control. She is sure that Jesus, too, would reject her if he fully knew her. Jesus, however, recounts her entire story to her, letting her know that she is fully known by him, and he does not condemn her for it, unlike the rest of the people in her society who wrongly would have. He instead chooses her to be the first person that he reveals himself to as the Messiah. She leaves joyful, telling everybody to go see the man who knows everything about her and accepts her anyways. Jesus was able to show her that he fully knew her and fully loved and celebrated her as she was. The feeling of Desperately wanting to be fully known and to still be fully loved is a feeling that queer people know well. And I can tell you with absolute certainty that God knows your queerness, fully knows your queerness, and fully loves you because of it. 
What a beautiful and amazing thing to be loved and embraced by our heavenly parent. To my dear child, you told me you are queer. I have lots of questions. Every parent worries about what the future holds, but we have plenty of time for those conversations. More importantly, there are a few things I want to share with you so you will know what you mean to me. First, thank you for trusting me. One of the biggest blessings we receive as a parent is the trust and love of our child, and you have given me that. I am grateful you are brave enough to share your truest self with me, and that true self is a treasure. I will work to keep your trust. Also, being queer doesn't change my love for you. If it were possible, I would go back to your younger self and make sure you knew it would be okay to tell me anything. My love is yours, whether you are straight or queer, girl, boy, or non-binary, or none of the above. I love you. Never doubt that. I am proud of the person you have become and are still becoming. You are changing the world even if you don't realize it yet. You have brought truth to your story and your story is beautiful. Finally, I want to learn from you. Tell me more about your experience, how you feel, what you think, and what I can do better. I promise you this. I will do my best to listen more than I talk, to respect your path, and to be kind. You are my child, the person I love most fiercely in this world, and you are amazing.
I think En Vogue said it best with uh, free your mind and the rest will follow. Um, and that I think has been an anthem um, in Pride since probably the, the first Pride that was done. Um, and it's one that I think the message is super strong. Just thanking the trans um, brothers and sisters that led that fight and reminding us that we have something to be proud about. Um, so sharing that light with the world. It's right there on the label. It's pride. It's knowing yourself. It's understanding parts of yourself and wearing that with honor, with uh, relish. Because, and because no one can take it from you. Um, you've, it's something that you have to fight for. It's something that you have to really understand and accept in yourself and it means walking down the street with your head held high. Uh, maybe you're a little scared, but you know who you are. You're secure enough in your identity to be proud of who you are. You don't have to hide anything. You don't need to feel ashamed about anything. You can answer a lot of questions about yourself too, just from having pride. Yeah, self-awareness. Uh, well, what pride means to me, um, definitely I'm very proud of relating to the queer community um, because I stepped out of my comfort zone and was open to experiencing love in a different way. Um, I was able to find paradox and I don't want to get emotional. Oh my goodness. <laughs> paradox. Is such a special place and I am very happy to be a part of this church community and just look forward to all of the things that um, we have planned in the future and I'm very proud of all the things that we've accomplished thus far. To me pride means a sense of community, um, feeling like I belong, I'm accepted, I'm an equal. Um, people see me as a person, not who I love, or I'm not judged because of that. And so just that, that feeling of love and acceptance is what pride means to me. Pride just means celebrating your authentic self, celebrating those that came before you to make it uh, more enjoyable and a freedom of, of experience to make sure that you are living your authentic self celebrating your trans brothers and sisters, tra uh, celebrating the black community, celebrating everybody who came before you to make sure that you are able to truly live your authentic self and express yourself however you want to be. Pride is a testament to resilience. Pride is, they can't keep us down for long. Pride is so many things and I feel like as a community, Though we resonate with experiencing excruciating trauma, I'd like to think that pride for us means, pride for me means acknowledging that trauma does not, ident does, is not the identity of my whole experience. Pride means that I am more than my trauma and I am more than enough. Um, pride means to me is just doing you and loving your truth. Um, not only are you living your life, but I feel like you're also living for others because um, you're a representation of people who may be, who may not be, who may not be at that stage that you are at yet, and be a little timid or hesitant or reserved, and so. Um, to show that it's capable and to be unabashedly yourself, I think is very courageous and inspiring to others. Pride means a lot of things. The first thing I think of is like a pride of lions. It's a community. It's courage. Uh, it's a lot of glitter. There's always a lot of glitter. You want people to know that even if you're quiet, you're there. And you want people to know that you were there.
was brought up in a lie But I seem to walk in circles It's getting hard to navigate When every map was never made for me And I thought it would feel good To understand why I was different But my title just talks over me I never even asked to be this way But to say that I'm a rainbow To tell me that I'm bright When I'm so used to feeling wrong Well it makes me feel alright didn't think it fair I was not to be trusted How can I be proud of what a million people shout at me? I'm not So please step inside my soul I'd love to watch you gasp Understand in minutes, and I'd like to think you'd miss it. Cause so would I. So say that I'm a rainbow, and tell me that I'm bright when I'm so used to feeling wrong. Well, it makes me feel alright. Oh, so say. Tell me that I'm bright And I'm so used to feeling wrong But it makes me feel alright Here at Paradox, we have elders who are elected by the congregation that uh, help us do, do the best we can to protect and grow the spiritual life of the church. And back in 2018, we read our first public statement uh, about our desire to be an affirming and celebratory community for the queer community, as well as for ourselves. And we have recently looked back at that and updated it. And so our elders have been retooling the statement because we are always growing and learning. So with that, we're going to read the elder statement now. Um, our head elder, Hillary, was supposed to be here today, but she was sick this morning. So I will be reading Hillary's part. As the elders of Paradox, we are charged to protect the spiritual life of our church. This responsibility compels us to make a statement of full affirmation of all persons who identify as part of the LGBTQIA plus communities. We came to this conclusion after several years of extended study in the Holy Bible, sustained prayer asking for God's guidance, and a growing in relationship as a church body. Therefore, may everyone who comes in contact with us know that we here at Paradox live with the conviction that people of all sexual orientations and gender identities are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of the divine. Welcome people across the spectrum of sexual orientation and gender identity to serve in every capacity of our church and to participate in the holy sacraments of baptism and communion. We do this because we believe the queer perspective is vital for a fuller experience of divine love and community. Ordain our pastors and hire church staff with full appreciation of their sexual orientation and gender identity and the perspective they bring to the ministry of the gospel. Provide a safe environment for people to question and explore their gender identity and sexual orientation. Celebrate the love between people of all sexual orientations and gender identities 
For all who choose, our pastors will happily officiate the holy sacrament of marriage. Embrace children raised by parents of all sexual orientations and gender identities and celebrate queer families through the holy sacrament of dedication. We educate all children and youth about the queer experience with the understanding that some may be queer themselves. We respect queer children and youth and trust in their self-knowledge of their own identity. Recognize the historic and ongoing violence of the Christian church towards the queer community through queerphobic theology and practices. The church bears the responsibility to acknowledge these abuses and to create an environment where people feel free to celebrate their full identities without fear. Will not tolerate queerphobic language, action, or theological teachings, and we commit to naming this behavior when it occurs. We will work as a community to grow in use of inclusive language and to respect the individual names and pronouns, as this is crucial to creating a supportive environment for queer members of this community. We believe that God encompasses the full spectrum of gender. To honor the gender expansiveness of God, we will use a variety of pronouns, she, he, they, and metaphors when we describe the divine. Hold space for diversity and intersectionality in the queer experience. Recognize that multiple factors such as race, gender, ability, and class inform the queer experience and contribute to various degrees of oppression and inequality that the queer community faces. We say and commit to all of these things in order to bring glory and honor to God, to love others as we love ourselves, and to love God with all our heart, mind, and soul. Sincerely, the elders of Paradox Church. As queer people, we are all made in the image of God. We connect with the divine, not in spite of our queerness, but because of it. Being able to recognize that making the decision to come out will put us in a position of vulnerability and doing it anyways is a spiritual experience. This is the decision that God made when deciding to come to earth as one of the most vulnerable forms of human life, a baby. God knew that being born as a human infant was a risky and vulnerable position and that Jesus would be liable to rejection. And yet, God made the choice to pursue love anyways. As queer people, we open ourselves up to the possibility of rejection again and again and again, no matter what kind of reaction we get. We live our lives in the pursuit of love and authenticity and continually search for those who will accept and support us. This resilience is incredible and it has made us stronger. I stand here today confident that I am a child of God as much as any straight person is. I celebrate the fact that God made my heart with the ability to love more than one gender. For everyone else who is not straight, I see you and you are beautiful. The type of love you experience is wonderful and God-given. Your love provides a fuller picture of who God is and how God loves, and you are essential for understanding the divine. For everyone who does not identify with the gender you were assigned at birth, I see you and you are beautiful. The way that you experience gender is reflects the experience of God. God cannot be contained within a rigid gender binary and any attempt by us to do so is merely a metaphor to understand them better. Everyone who is transgender will understand that in a way that myself and others comfortable in our assigned genders will not. Your experience with gender contributes to a fuller picture of who God is and you are essential for understanding the divine. When Crystal sang this morning, this is my parents' world, it reminded us how powerful the metaphor of a God who is neither male nor female can be, 
but it also reminded us that God is our maker. They created each and every one of us to be the incredible, resilient, and radiant queer people that we are. The wonder of God's creations never cease. Remember that you are made wholly and completely and beautifully in the image of God, created to be born this way. We invite you guys to stand and sing this last song with us. My mama told me when I was young, we're all born superstars. She rolled my hair, put my lipstick on, in the glass of her boudoir. There's nothing wrong with loving who you are, she said, cause he made you perfect, babe. So hold your head up, girl, and you'll go far. your truth the religion of the insecure I must be myself respect my youth a different lover is not a sin believe capital H I am I love my life love this record and Self today.